The year 2021 is special for us because it celebrates the 500th anniversary of the first Mass and the first baptism in the Philippines. It is also the year of St. Joseph. The question that runs in my mind is, was St. Joseph with Jesus during his passion, death, and resurrection? You will certainly answer me, no. The Gospels are quiet about it. It may be true that the Gospels do not mention St. Joseph being at the way of the cross, being at the Last Supper, or being at the crucifixion, or being at that moment when Jesus died on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven. But I want to take a second look at the question, was St. Joseph with Jesus during his moments of passion, death for our sins? I want to say, Joseph was there. As I am with you virtually, I believe Joseph was with Jesus virtually during those intense moments. Why do I say that? And why do I believe that? First, Joseph is the only human being whom God himself called Father. Jesus is God. And Jesus God called Joseph his father. What a great honor to be called father by God himself. That is the unique title that is not given to anyone else. To be the only human being, to be the only man whom God himself called father. St. Joseph was a good father to Jesus. He taught him carpentry. He taught him how to walk. He taught him how to stand up when you fall. St. Joseph was a good father. I am very sure he taught Jesus how to hold the hammer, how to sew wood. St. Joseph was a good father because he taught Jesus how to talk, maybe how to put food into his mouth, maybe even how to go to the toilet and wash himself. That is fatherhood. Now, this memory of fatherhood, a caring, tender fatherhood, a holy fatherhood, a guiding fatherhood, was the experience of Jesus, man, God, for 33 years. So, when Jesus exclaimed at Calvary, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. We understand that he was calling on God, the Father in heaven, who alone has the power to forgive sins. But the mere mention of the word Abba, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. For me, is a lesson that St. Joseph taught Jesus. He was called Father by Jesus. So when Jesus used the word Abba, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. Who taught the child Jesus the word Abba? Who taught the child Jesus the word Father? It was Joseph. Our fathers teach us Tatai, Daddy, Papa. I am very sure that Joseph, the foster father, the husband of Mary, is the same man who taught the child Jesus, Abba, Father. So, when we hear Jesus exclaiming, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. How can St. Joseph be far? I am very sure that in the heart of Jesus, he remembered how tender, how merciful, how forgiving Joseph had been for him. And it is that mercy, that tenderness, that he now invokes for those who are hurting him, for those who nailed him to the cross. 
Maybe Joseph was not at the crucifixion, but the lessons that Joseph taught Jesus, Jesus carried with him to the crucifixion. That is why he knew that the Father is tenderness, the Father is mercy, the Father is love, the Father is forgiveness. Was St. Joseph at the moment of the crucifixion? At the crucifixion, Jesus saved us from our sins. By his death, by his resurrection, we are saved from sin. And because of that, Jesus is called Savior. Savior. He comes to save us from sin, to save us from sure punishment. But did Jesus need to be saved? He also needed to be saved, not from sin, but from violence, not from sin, but from the wrath of Herod. So the angel appeared to Joseph and said, Rise up, take the child and the mother, and flee to Egypt, because Herod desires to kill the child. In a manner of speaking, many spiritual writers refer to Joseph as the Savior of the Savior. Jesus is the Savior, and Jesus needed to be saved as a child because he was defenseless. He could not take care of himself. He could not run. He could not seek refuge for himself. So Joseph brought the child Jesus and the mother to Egypt. And truly and really, he saved the Savior. When the Savior could not yet defend himself from the wrath from the violence of Herod. It was Joseph who saved him from the certainty of death. The child Jesus could have been included in the massacre of the innocents if Joseph did not save him from that wrath. Savior of the Savior. So back to the question, was Saint Joseph at the crucifixion? Maybe physically, no. Maybe realistically, no, but virtually, certainly, because the child Jesus knew the meaning of being saved by the experience of being saved by Joseph from the wrath of Herod. Savior of the Savior. So when Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, he could rightly say to Joseph, Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Father. Because you saved me as a child when I was totally defenseless from the wrath of Herod. And now I am here. Because you saved me from death as a baby, now I am here. I am able to save my brothers and sisters from the punishment of sin. Was Joseph at the, at the crucifixion? Physically, no. But the Savior was saved by Joseph. He must be there. Spiritually, virtually, joining in the self-sacrifice of Jesus for whom he cared. Maybe Joseph looked at the crucifixion and uh, said to himself, the child I saved from the wrath of Herod is now willingly dying so that sins may be forgiven. What a great honor that once upon a time in my life, I had a great privilege to save this child from murder. Was Joseph at the crucifixion? What did Jesus learn from Joseph? I am sure many things. Joseph taught Jesus that Mary is his mother. Joseph taught Jesus how to be a good neighbor for everybody. Joseph taught Jesus how to live pakikipagkapwa tao. That we live in a community, that we do not live by ourselves. We live in a neighborhood, and no man stands alone. 
So when Jesus on the cross said, Behold your son, behold your mother, where did Jesus learn about caring for those who are lonely, caring for those who have no one to guide them, for those who have no one to care for them, to nurture them. It was Joseph. Many lessons Jesus learned from the feet of St. Joseph, kneeling or perhaps sitting on the laps of St. Joseph. Joseph taught Jesus the many beautiful lessons that only a father can teach his child. So, very truly and really, St. Joseph was teacher to Jesus. St. Joseph was teacher of the teacher. The second teacher is with a capital T. Teacher with a small t. Teacher with a capital T. Teacher of the teacher. At the cross, Jesus continues to teach. He taught the good thief to rely on the mercy of God and assured him, today you will be with me in paradise. He taught the good thief the mercy of God. Where did Jesus learn that? From Joseph, the teacher. My dear brothers and sisters, was Joseph at the crucifixion? I say yes, because all the lessons he taught the child Jesus, all the lessons he taught the baby Jesus, all the lessons he taught the young adult Jesus, Jesus carried to the cross. So when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, it was the experience of a loving fatherhood in Joseph that Jesus was invoking for his enemies for those who looked at him as enemies. When Jesus saved us from our sins, Jesus could also say to Joseph, thank you for saving me from the wrath of the king. And Joseph, teacher of the teacher, is the only one who can say to all of us, that man on the cross, I taught him how to live for others. That man on the cross, I taught him to forget himself. That man on the cross, I taught him to stand up if he would fall while running or walking. That man on the cross, I taught him to endure pains because the pains that cannot kill you can only make you better. And if the pains can kill you, they will save your brothers and sisters from their sins. Was Joseph at the crucifixion? The lessons of the crucifixion are lessons that Jesus learned from Joseph. We thank the Lord for the gift of a man like him. One final question. Who was responsible for the death of Jesus? You can say the priests. You can say a bishop like Judas Iscariot. You can say the political leaders, you can say the lawyers, the scribes, the Pharisees, the experts in the law. But whoever you say was responsible for the killing of Jesus, there is one thing that surfaces very clearly. There were no children who shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And the blind, the deaf, the hungry, the crippled, the lame, the lonely widow, they were not there shouting, crucify him, crucify him, because they were the best friends of Jesus. They stayed with Jesus up to the very end, not to see him die and find contentment and happiness in it, but to see him die with great grief, something in them was dying also. The children and the poor and the needy, the orphans 
the widows, the strangers. They were not there. They were not responsible for the death of Jesus. They are our teachers. They are our teachers if you really want to follow the Lord. Saint Joseph belonged to that class. That is why at the presentation in the temple, they only offered the offerings of the poor, the anawim. They could not afford expensive offerings, two turtle jobs, two young pigeons, the offerings of a poor man, the poor and the children. Let them teach you what Jesus really did. If you are depressed, if you are sad, if you are tired, if you don't know what to do, I suggest, my dear brothers and sisters, go to the poor, go to the children, because the poor and the children carry the secrets of the kingdom of Jesus. Let us thank the Lord for loving us this way, and let us ask the Lord for the grace to be able to love in the same way. Let us allow the children to be our teachers, the poor to be our masters. Let us allow Joseph, the teacher of the teacher, the savior of the savior, the only man whom God called father, to be our father, to be our savior also, to be our teacher also. Please pray for me as I pray for you.